We're going to take a look at a landscape bed that I put in about 12 years ago now. We're still buried under snow up here in the Great Northern Plains, but this is what we've got to look forward to. Just a matter of hopefully about a month and a half, we should start seeing some nice green. But we're going to talk about the different varieties of plants that we've got growing here and take a look at the bridge as well as some of these different rocks and field stone we put in there. This is an important part of this overall bed and the contouring. So we're going to talk about all those things. Let's go ahead and get started as we move across left to right. First we want to take a look at these De Groot's Spire Arborvitae. A nice pyramidal evergreen that allows you to put things in a bed where you don't have to worry about that canopy coming over the top and creating shade. So I just absolutely love using pyramidal plants, especially this De Groot Spire Arborvitae. Just a gorgeous evergreen plant for our area, very hardy. Creeping thyme, look at that nice rose pink flower there. Just a beautiful plant. It has died out on occasion through here. If you look at this big open area here, that used to be all creeping thyme. And we've got some tulips in there as well that are just finishing up in that spot. So that's one of the things we'll talk about too on a landscape bed. Allowing the plants just to develop and fill in where they want is going to help you create that natural look. There we've got at least one tulip there. The rabbits haven't been real kind to us, but they're leaving us one, so we're going to share. If you take a look down there at the bottom, that's where they nibble them back. And uh, we just deal with that. That's okay. But the tulips play an important part of that early spring color. Now pay close attention as we move back and forth through these plants so the importance that something like that bridge plays. Imagine if that wasn't there right now as well as these large rocks and that field stone kind of sprinkled in there. Even though this is predominantly a mulch bed, these creeping plants have pretty much taken over there. All right, how I get started on any of these beds, I usually take a flexible hose and just lay it out. And I'll sometimes take days where I'll just look at it from different angles. I'll even set up a lawn chair until I'm comfortable with how that looks. After that, it's really just a matter of, you know, you bring in soil. That's probably 10 to 15 cubic yards there. This is a different bed, but it's going to give you the example. And then I'll bring in field stone. This is something that was hand-picked from the western part of our state. Just beautiful specimen boulders. Now working at garden centers over the years, some of the most common questions I get or statements from people is they just don't know where to start. They fully admit that they really don't know their plant material very well or haven't done much landscaping. My next best suggestion is walking through nurseries or garden centers and picking out seven to ten plants that you really like. Once you've narrowed it down to things that you think are going to work, it's a matter of figuring out what's the eventual size. Figure out what your vantage point is, where you're going to be viewing it most of the time, and now you can build yourself some type of crescendo. And please don't underestimate the importance of contouring and dumping that soil under this bed. That's what creates a much more, I guess, beautiful landscape in my opinion. Having this just flat to the ground, it really, really changes the overall look of it. You don't have to finish your project in a weekend. All oftentimes when I can tell people are stuck, I'll try to suggest to them to pick out maybe something, a couple of the bigger plants, and then just dwell on it for a day or two. You can always go ahead and just plant a few plants, put down wood mulch over the whole bed to keep the weeds down, and then you can start just adding plants, plants that you find. That's how my whole landscape has come together. I have a lot of open spots yet, and I wait for that time where I come across a plant that it is absolutely love. I'm also going to mention under any of my beds, any of the videos that you see, I have no fabric or no poly. And that first year can be a little bit of a challenge controlling those weeds, but the main reason I do it is it allows the plants to spread, to root in, to self-seed. The moment you put down that landscape fabric or poly, you're going to have problems where the plant can't establish itself naturally. So that might be the best advice out of the whole video today. All right, I've got some videos too on how we prepare some of those beds. Not this exact one, but go ahead and you can uh, subscribe and go to our channel. You can pull up those landscape videos if you like, if you're interested in that. All right, behind that rock, that biggest one, we do have a daylily growing there. Now, daylilies are just one of the toughest plants out there. And I do have a different bed 
in the yard where we've got just a mass planting of the different colored daylilies. You don't always have to go with random. You can do mass plantings. Next on the list here, we're getting into this golden moss sedum, a nice little ground cover that kind of is blending in with this icy blue juniper that we're going to talk about next. Look at how that one little arm is left to grow over there. And that's something I'll have to start pruning now annually. I don't want to cover up this rock, but I want the plants to blend in with it. Next on the list is something that actually has died out. It's this kobold blazing star. It's also called Leatris. That's the Latin genus. But look at the difference here between those two pictures. That Leatris added something special. I don't mind the bed without it, but it just goes to show you that it's something we can certainly add back in. If you like macro photography, <laughs> look at that. Isn't that just brilliant? What a cool photo. You'd never know that that's what that flower was if you looked at it first. All right, we talked about icy blue juniper. That's that long ground cover over the majority of that bed. And if you've got wood chips or soil, it's going to self layer. That juniper can kind of creep along and it'll grow pretty fast. It also does quite well in rocks because it'll take the heat, but it's not going to be self layering into those rocks. So it will slow it down. You can see here too, we don't want to cover up all that field stone. So that's been pruned like that on purpose where you allow those juniper veins to go through. Windows, windows in landscaping. You want to make sure you don't completely block something in your landscape whenever possible, unless you're trying to create a privacy screen. But look at that, that's standing back from a distance. And as I move through our landscape in our yard, I always want to be able to see different viewpoints of the plant materials. Now look at again, when you talk about windows, different angles you'll be able to see through on that yard. That's a cardinal dogwood. We're going to mention that just briefly for the most part this presentation. It's a large bed. We're only going to be talking about one third of it that's in front of that bridge. Next up, we've got a dwarf sesters Colorado spruce. This is a nice little dwarf spruce, only gets about, you know, six to eight feet tall, grows very slow, but a brilliant blue color. It complements that icy blue juniper that we talked about, and it just accents itself off very well off of the, some of the other greens and the colors we've got going. If you do like conifers and unique evergreens, I have another video. If you subscribe, go to the channel, you can page back and you'll see quite a few different red cone, Norway, a weeping Colorado blue. So I've got some nice ones to share with you if you're interested. So we're all the way up to the weeping larch. Now larch is a group of plants that has different forms. This is called a horseman's recurva. Uh, it is a deciduous evergreen. If you notice here, it drops all its needles each year. So something unique there too, but just a small compact evergreen, which gets also a brilliant yellow fall color. Next plant we're going to talk about, we'll take a look from the other side again. That's a white salvia, a beautiful plant. The salvias in our area are much more common in the different blue and violet colors, but this can self seed a little bit, draws in the bee activity like crazy. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful plant, very reliable, very hardy. But by the way, I didn't mention these boulders were left over from a landscape job and I got lucky. I believe they were shipped in from Iowa. It is, I believe it's a Sioux pink uh, quartzite rock, but I just fell in love with them and I was just happy to get those in our landscape. So this is the back side of the bed. We're not going to talk about that today. We spent our time just in the front, but look at how many different plant materials we've got going back there. One of them that stands out, of course, is that mountain frost ornamental pear. That's the first thing to show some color in the spring for us, just that brilliant white bloom. Here's that cardinal dogwood we quick mentioned. The colors of the twigs, they range throughout the season in the spring. We're getting into kind of a olivey green type color, fall color. So that's another great characteristics of that cardinal dogwood. Gets picks up some of those different reds and oranges. And then the red twig color that's beautiful in the winter, that red off the white, so awesome winter interest and a nice white spring flower, but it's a massive shrub. And that's why it's kind of behind this bridge as we move towards the back of the bed. We're doing type of a crescendo up type of habit. And there's a bed in the fall. That's that mountain frost pear picking up color. We're not going to talk about that today. We'll do another video, hopefully at a later date, where we can cover the diversity of that bed. And that brings us back to the original photo that we've been going back and forth to. 
I hope you enjoyed this video on Garden Hike. We'll see you again next time.